Hi everybody, it's Richard here again and welcome to another video. Now this is going to be probably the longest video I've ever done and it's the biggest undertaking I've ever done and it's ranking all of David Bowie's singles from 1964 to his death plus a few posthumous releases as well and also a few non-UK singles that I actually have in my collection. Um, I've done the 70s RCA years, I've done the 80s and I've done the 90s and beyond, never touched the 60s so I thought I would combine everything. Now obviously um, this could change and the way I did this was I had four pots. The first pot was the absolutely brilliant singles, the second pot was the excellent ones, the third pot was the very good ones and the fourth pot was um, the not so good ones so I ranked them all individually and stitched them together and then chopped and changed a few. So I don't have every Bowie single of course because some of them are worth a fortune and uh, so I've got something to show and I may be showing the same record twice. I'm not showing any LPs as such but I will be showing 12 inch sort of compilation singles. Okay as I say 112 let's get it going and I have no notes here, the only notes I have are them all listed so I'm going uh, by what I know so if I make mistakes, well I make mistakes. Okay number 112, <laughs> god that sounds terrible and I don't like this and it is Without You I'm Nothing by Placebo, I don't like Placebo, I don't like your man's voice, the song's not good and Bowie's voice is very low in the mix. Uh, 111 and it's the Toy Soldier EP with the opening track Toy Soldier by the Riot Squad. This was released, I'm not actually too sure when it was, but it was recorded in 1968 and it's very Velvet Underground influenced, especially with the uh, track uh, Venus and Furs, but it's not very good at all. At number 110, you may think this is low, but it's not great, it's the Laughing Gnome. It's a novelty song and it's not a brilliant one either, so it came out in 67 but it was a big hit in 73. 109 and we have the debut Liza Jane written by Arthur Cohn and it's one of those uh, 1960s uh, R&B type numbers from 64 and it's nothing special at all. Now number 8 may be a bit of a surprise but it's uh, Morrissey and David Bowie doing Cosmic Dancer now you would think with it being a Mark Bowen song and two of my favourite artists it would really work but it's a live recording and I think they make a bit of a mess of it to be honest but this came out a couple of years ago I think it was recorded around 1992 or so, or so something like that anyway but no not the best and 107 from the last Ziggy date and it's White Light White Heat and it's a Velvet Underground song. It's actually quite, quite a good recording. However, there's one thing that puts me off of this and it's actually Mick Ronson's guitar. I think he hits a few bum notes in this. It sort of sounds out of tune, but uh, not fantastic. Um, but it was released as a single in 83. Okay, number 106 and it's Rebel Never Gets Old, which is a mashup with uh, Rebel Rebel and uh, never get old which is weird it shouldn't have happened because never get old is a fantastic song it should have been released in its own right i must say i'm not going to include any remixes or anything like that so for example fame 90s not included john amoni dancing the sax version is not included as is um under pressure the ramix so things like that are not included but i did include this because of the track never get old but it's not fantastic. It came out in 2003. Okay, in 2014, I believe, or was it, uh, 2014, we have Sue, or Season in Crime, and this is a jazz number, and this is really difficult to get into. It's tuneless. Great B-side with Tis a Pity She Was a Whore, although the Black Star version is better. But they do on the B-side uh, edit a version of Sue, because this is about seven or eight minutes long, and it's a strip on. It's not good at all, uh, but the edited version's better, but not much. Okay, 104, and we have from 1978, and it's Breaking Glass, the live version from stage. 
much prefer the studio version. This is elongated, which is good to see, but it's not one of my favourites. And 103, and sometimes I really like this and sometimes I don't. That's the Alabama song, which was recorded around 1978 but wasn't uh, released until 1980. Um, yeah, it's okay, but I do prefer the Doors version, believe it or not. And at 102 we have I Pity the Fool, which is really a second single, although it's credited to the Manage Boys. Uh, this single uh, had its first ever written composition on the B-side called Take My Tip, which is a better track. But um, yeah, it's okay, it's nothing fantastic. And at 101 we have From Heathen, now this is an import single. And it is I've Been Waiting For You, it's a Neil Young song. It's not down there because it's Neil Young, I just don't think it's a very good song at all. So it gets uh, my number 101. Okay, we now get into the top 100, hooray! And I'm going to show this for number 199 and 98. 100 is Do Anything You Say, 99 Can't Help Thinking About Me, and 98 is I Dig Everything, and these are all three singles from 1966. Now he did re-record uh, Can't Help Thinking About Me, and I Dig Everything for the Toy album, which is they're very good actually. Now this is sort of mid 60s mod pop and you know there is an influence of the Who here but they're, they're okay but they're nothing brilliant at all. At number 97 and it's a reworking of a track from Tin Machine and it's I Can't Read and it's from the film uh, it's Ice Storm, yeah the Ice Storm and it takes a really good rocker, really slows it down, makes it very atmospheric but it doesn't improve in the original. I think this actually should have been on Earthling, as you know, just to calm things down at the end. It would have been a great ending track, but as a single, it's not very good. Okay, number 96, and we have the first Tin Machine single, and it's Under the God. It's a rocker, it's not one of the best on the album, it's one of my least favourite. Uh, it's grown on me a little bit, but it's still pretty low down for me. At number 95, and we have the first single for Durham Records, and it's Rubber Band. Now, this is different to the LP version. It is quirky, and, you know, it's almost kinks-like, but I do like it. I think it's, it's a good, fun little song. Nothing special, but it's, it's okay. At number 94, and I have to show this one again. And there's a track on here called You've Got a Habit of Leaving Me, which he re-recorded for Toy as well. It's one of his better ones. It's from uh, 1965. It's a boy composition and it is pretty good. At number 93 and it is Telling Lies, the first track from, um, or the first single to be released off Earthling. This was a download, I think one of the very first downloaded singles. It's drum and bass, it's alright, but drum and bass is not my thing and that's why it's quite far down. At number 92, and we also have from Earthling, and it's uh, Dead Man Walking. Now this is more melodic, but still I just don't think it's overly special. Um, it is again, uh, sort of a drum and bass sound. Number 91, and we have <laughs> Dancing in the Street with Mick Jagger. I love this when it came out. I absolutely adored it and I was so pleased it got to number one. It is a charity single, that's what it's there for and it's all just a bit of fun. At number 90 and we have Arnold Lane with uh, David Gilmore and this came out I think in 2006 or so. It's a live recording. It's a nice version. It, it does it justice but again it's nothing overly special. At number 89 and it's the third single from uh, Never Let Me Down, it's the title track, and this actually did quite well in America, I think this broke the top 30, but over here it failed, I think it just about broke the top 40, but it's not a bad song, it's a bit wimpy for Bowie, but still, it's okay. At number 88, and it's the duet he did with uh, Adrian Ballou, and it's Pretty Pink Rose, and this has got a very tin machine sound to it, again, it's not bad, it's nothing special, but it's it's okay. At number 87, and I have to show this, and it is 
at the prettiest star. Now this is not as good as the re-recorded version on Aladdin's scene, even though this does have my hero Mark Bolin on it. It is very laid back and um, it's okay, but um, the one thing I will say is that Mark Bolin's guitar is pretty good because uh, Mick Ronson copied it note for note, but the Aladdin's scene version has got far more spark in it. Okay, um, where are we at? Okay, number 86, and it is from 1992, and it's Real Cool World from the film of the same name, and this is a dance number, and I think this is actually quite good. It's better than some of the stuff off Black Tie White Noise, uh, so this is the first one actually to be released after Tin Machine. Okay, at number 85, and this is, I think, an import single, although it did chart here, and it's Slow Burn from Heathen. Now this is quite low down because I think it's a little bit too reminiscent of either Teenage Wildlife or Heroes and it's that sort of uh, song and because of that it, it just drops for me. It's never been one of my favourites off even but apparently it's, this is the one that actually got on the best of Bowie so Slow Burn is my number 85. At number 84 and it's uh, from ours and it's Survive and this is the Mario De Vries mix and this is better than the album version it gives it a little bit more oomph and the album version is a little bit monotonous but this one here I think is more exciting put it that way so it gets 84 okay at number 83 and we have from Earthling again and it's seven years in Tibet and I think this is actually quite good. Um, it's less drum and bass although there is a hint to uh, smells like teen spirit in this especially with the guitars crashing of course but it's not bad. At number 82 and we have the third single from Black Tie White Noise and it's Miracle Goodnight and I think this is actually a pretty good song you know, um, that album's actually grown on me a bit more, Black Tie White Noise, but it didn't do too well, and again, it was the third single. At number 81, and one of the first of the 70s ones I'm showing, and it's TVC15 from uh, Station to Station. Now this is my least favourite song on that whole album. Um, the single version is better because I think the album version's too long of an intro. But um, yeah, it's okay. The piano annoys me a little bit on it, but still, it's a good song, but it's not a fantastic single. At number 80, and we have from One Outside, and it's the third single, and it is Hello Space Boy, and this is the one with the Pet Shop Boys, and they remix the almost drum and bass track and turned it more into a pop song. Believe it or not, I think I prefer the album version, but still, that's pretty good and it was top 20 hit. Okay at number 79 and it's the second single from the next day and it's the stars are out tonight. I do like this but there's a little hint of blandness to it. I think it works well with the video but the song itself I think there's, it takes too long to get into the chorus. I think there's too many verses so it's okay number 79. At number 78 and we have again Earthling and it's the second single and the biggest hit and it's Little Wonder and it's okay but it does go on a bit especially um, the uh, refrain part so far away so but it's, it's alright. At number 77 and probably most people's favourite track off Never Let Me Down and it's Time Will Crawl. Yeah it's okay they did a remix of this uh, for Oh, what's the album? I can't remember the name of the album. I know it was the collection or something like that. And uh, I think I still prefer the original. It's again not my favourite, but still good track. And at number seventy six, and this is um, a remix of another track from Never Let Me Down. It came out in twenty eighteen, and it's zeros. And this really has uh, improved. Um, it's on the Never Let Me Down uh, reworking, so it's a completely different uh, backup. Uh, the musicians, I think, are different. Okay, it's Bowie's voice, but this works so well. The album track, not as good. It's a bit uh, cheesy, but this is far better. At number 75, and his last one for RCA during the uh, initial run, because I think he was on it for Outside, 
is Baal's hymn from the Burtok Brick uh, Baal. And I remember buying this and absolutely hating it, but I really do like it now. It's a little EP, but the, the lead off track, Baal's hymn, is the best track on it. So, yeah, good track. Okay, um, at number 74, and I have to use this for it, and it's I Can't Give Everything Away, and this is one of the tracks on the Black Star um, 12 inch that was from the Bowie is in Japan. Yeah, it's a good song, final track off a final album, and very poignant, but still only gets my number 74. At number 73, and it's the first single from Reality, and it's New Killer Star. Really good rocker, but as I said earlier on, I think uh, Never Get Old should have been the single. Okay, at number uh, 70, that was 73, number 72, and it's the second single from Low, and it's Be My Wife. Um, yeah, good song, but for me, it should have been uh, What in the World. It's very sort of piano based. A little bit like TVC15 in a way. Good video though, I guess my number 72. At number 71, and the biggest hit from Heathen, and it's Everyone Says Hi, which is a nice acoustic number. I think he played this on Top of Pops 2 or something like that. And again, I did okay. I think it just scraped the top 20. Well, definitely got top 30 anyway. So I guess my number 71. And then at number 70, we have from. 1982 as Cat People. I know this is the original version, they re recorded it again for Let's Dance, but this one is the best from the film. Now, at number 69, it's uh, a posthumous release from this EP called No Plan. Now, although No Plan is the second track off this, Lazarus is the first, uh, No Plan was the one that was promoted, so I'm including it. And it is an outtake from Black Star, and yes, it is good, and it probably should have been on the album. In fact, the three uh, outtakes on here possibly could have been on that album, but it's medium paced, it's a little bit slower than medium paced, but it's a good track. And at number 68, and we have From Outside, and it's Strangers When We Meet, and this is like a double A side with a re. Uh, imagined version of the man who sold the world again this has got a bit of a hero's feel to it but it's a good song although i do prefer the version on buddha of suburbia at number 67 and it's from 1985 and it's uh this is not america with pat Metheny from the film the falcon and the snowman yeah good track and he played this live a few times around 2000 or so and number 66, and it's the second single from Tin Machine 2, and it's Baby Universal. I think this is a very good song, it's the opener to the album, and he recorded this as well live during the 1995 Outside Tour, so good track, good rocker. Um, at number 65, um, we have the uh, opening track of, or the opening single, of black tie white noise and it's jump they say and uh, yeah this is good there's also a rock mix of this which is not so good but yeah good track and it was his last top 10 hit i think got to number nine in 1993. okay uh number 64 and we come back to this again here for lazarus now you may think it should be higher but the reason i put this down a little bit because i think the course is nicked from the track slip away or uh, uncle floyd um, it's very very similar in sound but it's a good song and yes it is heartbreaking especially if you watch the video because he know he knew he was dying but um, it's still it's a good song but it still can't get higher than 64 for me Okay, at number 63, and we have Underground from Labyrinth. This is a really good song. Um, I loved it then. Maybe not much as much now, but still, it's got a gospel chorus. But the video sort of nicks a little bit from Aha's Take On Me. But anyway, it's a good track, and that gets my number 64, or 3. Right, at number 62, and we have... Valentine's Day and this is the one two three I think it's the third or the fourth single third single from the next day yeah very good it's almost 
people think it seems to be a little bit ziggy like I don't think so it was a very scathing song and I know Noel Gallagher really does like this and number 61 and the second single from Black Tie White Noise and it's the title track and it's my favourite track of it I hated this at the time but I really got to like it I think it's because I play I bought this uh, Best of Bowie CD I think it was a Czechoslovakian version and it was actually on it and all the songs were not in chronological order and when this came on I really enjoyed it so I went back to it and it has got my number 61 and I think it's very good Okay, at number 60, and it's the third single from tonight, and it is Loving the Alien. Yeah, very good. Most people's favourite from the album. Not mine, but uh, yeah, it's a good song. I, I would just wish it had been produced a little bit differently, but still, good track. And at number 59, the third Tin Machine single, and it's Prisoner of Love, and I think this is very good, um, but it did absolutely nothing. It's sort of slow to medium paced, uh, very melodic, but did nothing. At number 58, um, I'm starting to think maybe I should have this a little bit higher, but I'll stick with it. And it's 7 from ours. It's a very acoustic number. This is the Marius de Freeze mix. And I think, yeah, it's good. I think I also prefer this version to the album version as well. The album version is very acoustic and in fact it led a lot of people to think the album sounded a bit like Honky Dory which is absolute rubbish. But still, it's a good melodic song and it gets my number 58. Okay, at number 57 and I have to show which one again, this one. Um, it's Holy Holy from 1971 which was re-recorded um, with the Spiders in 72 and issued in 74 as the B-Side of Diamond Dogs. But this is an oddity because it doesn't have the Spiders on it. It's got members of Blue Mink on it and I think it's a very atmospheric song and I do prefer this original version to the Spiders version although the remix of it on this album here, or 10-inch single here, is even better. But uh, yeah, it's a good song and uh, I guess my number 57. And at number 56 we have You Belong in Rock and Roll from Tin Machine 2. It was the first single. Yeah, atmospheric, good track and probably the second best song of that album. Behind Goodbye Mr. Red. Okay, number 55, and uh, you might think this is high, but I really do like it a lot more now than I did, and it's day in, day out, the opening track and the opening single from Never Let Me Down. Terrible video, boy in roller skates, but if you actually listen to the bass line of this, it's got a little, bit, a little bit of a Let's Dance sound to it. Nowhere near as good as Let's Dance, but it's better than what a lot of people think. And at number 54, I'm going to uh, foreign single, this one's from Japan. And it's Crystal Japan, and it's an instrumental, and it's really good. And this was originally planned to be on Scary Monsters as the closing track. But I'm glad it wasn't included, because I really do like the way that It's No Game number 2 finishes the album. This was actually a single for um, Water um, in Japan. And it's a short track, and it came out as the B-side of Up the Hill Backwards, but still it gets included. That's my number 54. At number 53, we come back to this again, and it is Memory of a Free Festival. The track from uh, Space Oddity, or David Bowie, uh, or Man of Words, Man of Music. But it's uh, a reworking, in a way. There's added guitar by Mick Ronson, who wasn't on the original. And it's a good track, but um, still only gets my 53. Okay, at number 52, and we have the second single from Lodger, and it's DJ, edited version. Works better as an edited version as well, because it takes out that baritone uh, middle section, which I was never that keen on. Good song, but to me, it should not have been the single of Lodger. It should have been either the Assassin or Look Back in Anger. At number 51 and the second single from Heroes and it is Beauty and the Beast. Again another pretty good single, opener to the album but to me Secret Life of Arabia was actually screaming out to have been included as a single or issued as a single. Okay number 50 and it's an American single only and it's the fourth single from uh, Let's Dance and it's uh, Without You which is a beautiful ballad in fact 
the whole of the Let's Dance side one was issued as singles. But um, yeah, good song. I would have liked this to have come out as a double A side with Shake It in the UK, but never came out. Okay, um, where are we at now? Number 49 in a posthumous release. And it's like a double A side, Mother and uh, by John Lennon and Trying to Get to Heaven, written by Bob Dylan. It's the Trying to Get to Heaven I'm talking about here and not the Mother. I think he destroys it. The Trying to Get to Heaven is a really good track and I believe this was recorded around 1997 or so. I'm delighted to get this on single that was reissued or issued a couple of years ago. And number 48 and we have The Buddha of Suburbia from 1993. Yeah, this sort of harks back a little bit to his 70s material and even mentions Ouvre Le Chien from uh, All the Mad Men on The Man Who Sold the World. Good track, just scraped the top 40 and no more unfortunately. And number 47 we have Knock On Mood from David Live and this is the cover version of course but I really do like this version and I still love it and it got top 10, actually it got to number 10. And then at number 46 we have, you may think this is low, that's John I'm Only Dancing. Now I'm going with the original single. I prefer the sax version which uh, came out in 1973 and it had the same serial number as the original version. So it's difficult to tell which one you get whenever you buy uh, a UK issue. But to me um, it's too slow. and. I don't think it's produced that well, the sax version it is much better, but this is the version I'm going with. It's still a very, very good song, and of course it was a hit for, um, who was it? Was it the Polecats or something like that there? can't remember. Anyway, that's my number 46. And my number 45 is an import single again, and it is... Uh, Let's Spend the Night Together from Aladdin Zane and I absolutely love this. I used to hate it as well. It used to be my least favourite off Aladdin Zane but I actually prefer this now to the Stones version. I think there's more oomph to it and it is excellent. Okay at number 44 we have the first single from tonight and it is Blue Jean. Yeah good, good video, nothing wrong with it. Uh, good sax in it, catchy song, do like it number 44. All these are really good now. We're talking about brilliant songs. And number 43 and it's the second single from Tin Machine and it's the title track Tin Machine and this rocks on brilliantly. Absolutely love it. Uh, but still only gets 43. And number 42 and it's the third single from Scary Monsters and it is the title track Scary Monsters and Super Creeps. Again this is an edited version and it had to be because it was well over five minutes long. And um, this is an in your face song, uh, but works really well. But still, I wouldn't have put it as a single, but it's a really good song. And number 41, and it's the probably the most obvious single in David Bowie's career, and it's actually the third single from Let's Dance, and it's Modern Love. I think maybe this should have been the second single because I think it would have given them another number one hit, but still, it reached number two and catch as hell. And summer autumn more autumn of 1983 when this came out but absolutely love it and number 40 and we have i think it's the fifth single from the next day and it's love is lost and this is a complete remix a reworking actually of the album track but this works so well because it puts in uh the synthesizer or the keyboard part from ashes to ashes and it really does work Great video as well, actually quite creepy, but really excellent song. And you do get an edited version along with the, I think it's about eight minutes long, but the edited version is probably even better. It's on the B side, so that's Love is Lost. And number 39, you may think it's too high, but I've always loved it, and it's Tonight. It's my favourite track from the Tonight album. It's a duet with Tina Turner, but you can hardly hear her. It's a reggae version of the Lust for Life track. I like both, but I actually do prefer this, and I think it works well. But only got to number 54 or something like that there in the charts, which was a big disappointment. At number 38, and it's uh, Suffragette City from 1976. Now, this was issued to promote the Changes uh, One Boy album, but it failed. Great Ziggy track, great rocker, but didn't do anything at all. At number 37 and we have 
Sorrow from Pinups. Now we're getting into the really big hits here. Uh, yeah, cover version, uh, number three hit single. One of the better tracks off Pinups, although I love the whole album. Yeah, very good, but I can't put it any higher than 37. And at number 36 is the fourth single from Scary Monsters, and it's Up the Hill Backwards. Yeah, really good choice of single. Again, I think maybe it should have been the third one, but still. Uh, very good, but again, four singles, it didn't do too well. I think it just scraped the top 40 and no more. Okay, where are we at now? Okay, at number 35, and you may think this is a surprise, but I love this. This is from 1967, and it's Love You Till Tuesday. I think this is so melodic. It's from his debut album, although this version is slightly different to the album version. I think this is magnificent. Really good little track, and you see the video on it for the, from the Love You Till Tuesday film. Really good. So that gets my number 35. And at number 34 is another track from Scary Monsters, but it wasn't released. It came out, it must have been about five years ago for Record Store Day, and I'm including it. And it's Kingdom Come, the song written by Tom Verlaine. It is a Record Store Day issue. I absolutely love it. It's one of his best ever cover versions. The B-side of it is Tom Verlaine's version. But uh, yeah, really good track from side two of Scary Monsters. Uh, next one is number 33 and it is The Next Day and this is the fourth single from The Next Day and this is like a square picture disc which is not a very good picture, it's white. Uh, yeah, fantastic video on this, really good, it's enhanced by the video but it's a really good rock song and it's the one that opens the Next Day album. And number 32 and uh, it's John I'm Only Dancing Again which was from the 1974 uh, sessions and came out as a single in edited form in 1979. The full version is on the 12 inch and it's on the album The Gouster, but really good. Now this is included because this is a completely different song to John I'm Only Dancing. It's a com complete, there's nothing at all apart from John I'm Only Dancing. It is similar, but yeah, really good soul song. And number 31, and I'm including this as well, because this is from the uh, David Bowie is Japan, and it's Lady Stardust, and again, this is a brilliant track from Ziggy, and it's one of Ziggy's most underrated tracks, it opens up side two, beautiful piano song, allegedly it's about Mark Bowen, I don't know if that's true or not, but really good track. Okay, at number 30, and we're getting into the really big ones here, and it's Under Pressure with Queen, number one hit single in 1981. Really good. Now, I actually do like the remix of this from about, it must be 1999, but I'm including this. This is still very good. Good Queen B-side, by the way, called Soul Brother. But as you'll find out next, this is not my favourite collaboration. Because my favourite collaboration, and I'm being honest, and it's my number 29 and it's Peace on Earth Little Drummer Boy with Bing Crosby because two complete opposites and they get together and it works so well and for me this is now a Christmas staple and I absolutely love it. Now Bowie had nothing to do with this. Apparently he didn't want to sing uh, Little Drummer Boy because he couldn't stand the song so somebody, whoever it was, I can't read that wrote the part A Peace on Earth which he sang and putting the two of them together absolutely gorgeous and it gets my number 29 and number 28 and we have Fame uh, yeah the, the 1990 version of this is dreadful this is very good um, again it's a slight edited version to the LP track and it's co-written with John Lennon and Carlos Alomar the riff of it is Nick from a track he was playing called Foot Stomping but yeah, again, number one hit in America. It only got to about 15 or 16 over here. Great song. <clears throat> okay, at number 27, and it's the compact single from uh, 2013. And it's Where Are We Now? It's the uh, first single from the next day. Really good video and very slow. I was surprised he released such a slow song to start with. But in hindsight, it was the best move. And it actually got to number six in the charts. Okay, at number 26, and it is th from the When the Wind Blows soundtrack, and it is the title track. Uh, yeah, this is released in early 1987. Didn't do too well, but I think it's a really good song. Brilliant song, and it's 
better than anything off Le Never Let Me Down and it gets my 26 a 25 and it's the number 2 hit from 1983 and it's China Girl it's a reworking of the Iggy Pop track from The Idiot very good um, the B side was Shake It which I just wish they hadn't done that I think it was a real single material but the uh, video was banned by I think the BBC because he showed his bomba so that's my number 25 and at number 24 and to promote changes to boy it's wild as the wind which was originally uh, from 1976 station to station album and this is gorgeous uh, this came out in 1981 and it managed to get the top 30 which I was surprised but beautiful song as a cover version obviously of the Johnny Mathis song or I think he originally sang it okay at number 23 and we have Rock and Roll Suicide which was released in 74 between Rebel Rebel and Diamond Dogs and it got top 30. This is obviously the closing track of Ziggy Stardust but I think they thought that maybe the way they did with another one this one would do really well but it didn't. Still got top 30 though. Okay at number 22 and we have the Gene Genie. Uh, yeah number two hit sounds like blockbuster sweet sounds like uh, yardbirds uh, i'm your man but it's great fun and i guess my 22 and at 21 the very first single they released for rca and its changes and it's the opening track with hunky dory and again it's an absolute classic all these now are absolute classics so to have uh changes only at 21 you think it's a disgrace but it's not really because they're all brilliant at number 20 and one of his best singles one of his top three singles of the 80s and it's absolute beginners from the film of the same name and yeah this is the edited version which is good the 12 inch version is much better with more guitar more sax really good track at number 19 and we'll go with black star and uh, this is a magnum opus from his last album i know it's two parts you have the very haunting beginning and then the more uh light filled second part but it's a brilliant track and it comes in at nine minutes and 58 seconds he wanted it to go on longer but apparently if it went over the 10 minutes it would no longer be classified as a single so and he wanted it as a single and there's a great video for it as well Okay, at number 18 and um, it is Fashion from Scary Monsters, really great track, great groove to it, got to number 5 in the charts at the end of 1980 or November 1980, brilliant. Okay at number 17 and I'm going to put in another non-UK single and it is Time from Aladdin Sane and yeah this is slightly shorter than the album version it's just the end of it is edited out a bit but it's a really really great track and it's one of the best tracks from Aladdin Sane uh, love it so time gets my 17 and the last CD I'm going to show at number 16 is Thursday's Child from ours and again the video of this is fantastic it really is and it's the opener to ours beautiful beautiful song it's quite slow but really really good okay at number 15 and it's the first single from Lodger and it's Boys Keep Swinging and seeing this on Kenny Everett at the time I just thought it was magnificent oh, it was so so funny so it gets my number 15 and um, I think it was uh, Blur copied it a little bit for their track M.O.R and then I had to end up giving Boy a credit Okay, at number 14, and I think this works out as my favourite from the 90s, uh, it's The Heart's Filthy Lesson from 1995, and it's the opening, or it's the opening single from One Outside, and I shouldn't like this, I shouldn't like this type of music, but I love this song so much, I think it's so, I don't know how to describe it, it's just so different, and it's very, very adventurous, and it really does work, and it gets my number 14. At number 13 and it is Diamond Dogs from Diamond Dogs brilliant track a little bit long six minutes could have been edited should have been edited there is uh, a version on the KTEL best of boy and I think it's even better because it comes in around four minutes I think it even works even better but very stonesy 
absolutely love it and it's from the best album of all time anyway okay at number 12 and we have the first single from diamond dogs and it's rebel rebel yeah again this has been worked upon there's a 2002 version of it then there's the american version with the lie lie lies but uh the original is still the best and uh, it's one of his best glam rock riffs ever uh, it's just fantastic and it's one of the songs he's known for most so rebel rebel it's my number 12 and my number 11 and just feeling to hit the top 10 it's another track from diamond dogs but was released in america now it was definitely released in the 80s i have a feeling it was also released in the 70s as well and it's 1984 and this is a 1980s sleeve uh, to promote the fame and fashion album uh, this is great this definitely should have been released because this has got a funky sound that uh, paves the way to his next album um, young americans but it still sounds within the diamond dogs album perfect this is why i love that album so much but yeah 1984 is my number 11 and my number 10 and we have we're hitting huge ones now golden years from station to station uh, originally offered to elvis presley but he refused it and thank god he did because then well, he wouldn't have recorded it brilliant track a number nine uh, number one hit let's dance yeah brilliant 1983 uh, this is just the spring of 1983 this came out and absolutely love it brilliant track and you know i sometimes put this as my favorite number one of the 80s for Bowie, but this time is my second and at number eight and we have young americans uh, an absolute classic track now in america they butchered this they cut about two minutes off it and it's just not the same song but their full length version of this is so soulful it's just an absolutely brilliant track and number seven and it is heroes and yeah this again is an edit which is not as good as the lp version but still it's an absolute iconic track and this is the one that in 2012 team gb walked out to into the stadium and i was so proud to hear that so heroes gets my number seven number six and um, number one hit in 1980 ashes to ashes iconic video absolutely brilliant it sticks out a little bit like a sore thumb on the scary monsters album because it's a different type sound i think but it's just really great and it's uh major tom part two which leads on to number five major tom part one and we have space holiday which is a number one hit in 1975 um yeah absolutely iconic david bowie song and also charted in 1969 when it came out originally okay number four and we have from 1973 and it's driving saturday and this is fantastic this is really really good not a great b-side though with round and round but this song is like harking back to the 50s and learning to live learning to love again and learning to have sex again basically and uh yeah really great track and i love the performance on the russell hearty show which leads me to the top three and uh, it's so difficult this top 10 so difficult but number three is starman is the one that really brought him back it got top 10 in 1972 and it's that iconic top of the pops performance where he puts his arm around mick ronson that everybody was talking about i wasn't i was only six i can't remember it but yeah brilliant brilliant track and this is the one when every day they were all congregating and singing this one there's a star man waiting in the sky and uh brought tear to the eye so number three is star man number two sound and vision from 1977 hit number three brilliant track and it's one of those songs that you know you think how does he get away with it because it's well over a minute before the singing starts it's mostly instrumental but uh, absolutely fantastic track from low which means my number one and i have to give it to it because it's one of the most perfect songs ever written and it's life on mars and um, I bought the single whenever I was a kid, not this version, because I didn't get the picture sleeve. But the B-side of it is The Man Who Sold the World, which is absolutely brilliant as well. There was a song called um, uh, Comme d'Habitude, 
where uh, it was tendered out for people to write lyrics for it and he wrote lyrics uh, called Every Fool Learns to Love or something like that and it was rejected and um, the, the one that actually won was Paul Anka who wrote My Way. This is a response to that because um, it's got the same type of song really if you think about it but to me this is just brilliant and his vocals are fantastic as well and every live version I've heard he's never managed to do it as well as the studio recording and an absolutely brilliant track so number one david bowie single of all time life on mars right well that took quite a while um if you're if you're still here well done you deserve a medal and now i'm looking at all this stuff and i have to put it all away again which i might leave for a couple of hours but i've enjoyed doing this i hope you enjoyed it and um We'll see if anybody did make it the whole way through without skipping. Anyway, that's me for now, and I hope to have a video not too soon after doing that. But anyway, all the best now. Bye bye.